Hey everyone, welcome back to the return of Drawing with Dave. And super excited to get into this. And this episode is actually sponsored by Clip Studio Paint, a program that I've been wanting to dive into for probably years now. A lot of my community use Clip Studio Paint and they always ask me if I use it, if I want to get into it. And so this has been the perfect opportunity for me to move over, move over a lot of my workflow that I usually do over at Clip Studio. And so I really haven't explored the program much, so I'm hoping today, while we spend at least an hour working on a brand new sketch, we can dive into the program a bit, and I'd love to tackle it and kind of stick with it as we go forward. Guys, thank you so much. Let's see what we're going to draw today. All right, I hope everyone is having a good and safe week so far. And I'm excited to just hang out with everybody and figure out a little sketch and maybe we can get some, some coloring. I'm really not sure since we're so new to the software here, but something I'm super excited about. I figured we could actually do more of a creature concept sketch today, something we don't usually do. And so I did get the program open. I moved my color wheel to the top right here. And if you guys didn't see the opening real quick, uh, we are using Clip Studio Paint. This is a sponsored video by them. Uh, one that I actually plan on, uh, piece of software I actually plan on using quite a bit going forward. You know, most of the time I've used Photoshop in the past just because it's something that I have always used and I really didn't have too much of a reason for it sometimes. And I'm trying to kind of take my own advice that I used to give of always trying to push yourself, change your how you work, your methods, any of that stuff. And I, I found myself getting into the same type of painting routines where I start the same and then my processes are the same, especially how I start to color everything. And so I think this is a great way to completely change my workflow and how everything works. So right now I actually have no idea what I'm going to be painting. But sometimes when I don't really know at all, I'll just start with some like really crazy loose sketches. And then we can kind of see where we go from there. You know, I wanted some type of, I thought maybe like a floating creature. And I like to really start with like these kind of loose lines. So right now I went to the pencil tool. I'm using this darker pencil. I figured as we go uh, further, we can explore some more with these brushes. I, you know, I did spend like maybe five, 10 minutes before looking at some of them, really, really cool stuff. And that's actually one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is the kind of base selection of brushes to get some really cool results in a paint with definitely seems kind of far superior. Sorry, Adobe. Then Photoshop, I've, usually with Photoshop, I really feel like I need to import a lot of custom brushes to get nice looking results. You know, uh, maybe that's changed, but that's something that I usually feel. And it seems like there's actually some really cool out of the package stuff that's, you know, usable here. And I don't know if I want him flying or maybe this is kind of like a snake elemental thing. I don't even know. And what I would like to see actually, cause this is a series that's you know, it's a little bit easier for me to do too. It's just hanging out with everybody. I want to get kind of more into the community here on, on YouTube. And we can kind of see what we can make, you know, week after week. I can't, right now I have a, actually a pretty crazy work schedule. So it's, it's hard to deliver these on a, a weekly basis, but I would like to try to get these out when I can. I mean, maybe he's got some type of wing shape. I'm not sure if we don't like the sketch, we can we can try something else. But this would be just cool to find some neat shapes and it's like I haven't really decided what I want to do for a mouth yet, but if we find kind of these little eye areas. And what could be this type of chest, I guess? Does he have legs? Does he not? I am I'm not super sure yet. Figure out where Maria knee is. Yeah, we'll we'll work with this brush for a little bit here and kinda of see. 
Now I'd like to spend at least an hour, I think, really get some more time in. That was kind of my regret on some previous videos, is not spending enough time. Or sometimes they felt rushed or didn't get enough effort into them. And you know, I really trying to give everybody as much quality content as possible. And I don't want to feel like something's just being shot out real fast, right? I'm not sure, maybe there's some type of horn thing. You know, one thing I, I do want to work on quite a bit this year is keep working on my uh, my shape design, my line quality. I would love to get into more kind of comic looking art and that type of focus on line with some clean colors. That's really kind of where I see a lot of stuff almost going this year and I think it'd be really, really cool to do. I don't know, it's kind of like a, almost like a type of demon head here. With his kind of back hunched over, maybe we can do some, some crazy uh, spikes coming up the spine. You know, it's a uh, it's a staple of any weird demon thing. Maybe he's just floating like a little little bit off the ground here. So wind could come all the way down, maybe. And then I figure we could get a nice line drawing going on this. Maybe, maybe on the next episode, we could actually explore into the process of painting and coloring within the, in the inside Clip Studio. That'd be super cool. Yeah, because honestly, I've seen so many great pieces uh, these days come out of uh, CSP, and uh, more and more artists I see uh, I'm using it. And for the price point, seriously, pretty phenomenal. Because I don't do anything really fancy in Photoshop ever. Well, you guys have seen how I paint. I basically just build up random layers and just paint on top of it. There's, I don't use any kind of there's no fanciness what I do, that's for sure. I'm a very unfancy artist. Most of them like veins and these kind of muscles. I think, let's see here. Well, I think it's gonna be art, um, odd at first working on this. And the software is uh, kind of just navigating real quick. I, I'm definitely, it's gonna I feel a little bit slower. We can check out even these base ones like mechanical pencil. That's very cool. I love uh, using mechanical pencil, especially like in my sketchbook. That's usually one of my favorite tools is the good old mechanical pencil. Yeah, so you know, always at this stage, I, I like staying super loose. I think it's important. Maybe we can figure out some type of mouth here. He needs needs some eyes peeking around at us. Wondering what we're doing. Why are we painting them? You now even with these you try to get in some type of shapes that are familiar to you know, human anatomy with cheekbones and all that cool stuff. But then even at one point, we could give like some cool pieces of armor on or something. I mean, he doesn't have to be like hovering here like some all naked. We throw something on him. And that's something I, I can usually do after, but sometimes I might put these shapes of like, oh, maybe he's got some type of gauntlets on, even though it's kind of a mess trying to figure out what we're really kind of doing for anatomy here. 
So I am not sure. We're kind of just blocking this all in. We don't even know if we want any of these shaves. But we'll give it a whirl for now. These big kind of claw nails coming down maybe. But this could be pretty cool. And then, you know, we can always make these these hands larger. We can kind of figure out this other one too and we'll be back here and trying to exaggerate some of these shapes in the forearm and how that's all happening. Maybe you can have some type of gauntlets on this side, but maybe they, they're a little bit different. You know, I'm trying to I actually keep my wrist off the uh, office antique as I'm painting these. I like to try to keep my hand kind of as loose as possible. Yeah, there's some like really nice fluid shapes I feel like I'm getting in here, which is very cool. He's got to, you know, protect this area down here. That's, that's important. Then we can figure out all this kind of stuff later. He could have, I know I'm seeing it, actually could be pretty neat. We're probably gonna make a bunch of layers here, I guess, new layer, roster layer is what I assume we would want. I'm gonna draw like a kind of a big shoulder pad piece of armor, kind of see how that plays. Um, I did set a keybind real quick for uh, flipping the canvas before we started, I know. That is like one of the first things that I ever do that's super, super important is getting that set up. Yeah, maybe he's got some pretty neat uh, shoulder thing kind of with some other face. You gotta have shoulder armor, always needs to have another face embedded into it, so it's important. That's when you know it's legit. And we can figure out all that. A demon, and then instead of like a human character with demon shoulder plates, maybe it'll be a human face on top. Or maybe not, that might just be weird. Okay, I wonder, does uh, Control E do the same thing? Yep, that just merges the layer down, which is good. I'm gonna try to lasso the shape out if I can actually do it properly. Uh, so if you guys are new to the series, we usually do these with no music, so you can always feel free to pop your own music in. Control T, nice. Things are happening the way I feel like I want them to. Sure, what I want to do with this hand, like, he kind of looks like he's leaping in a weird way. Which isn't necessarily bad, but, okay, I think, Okay, there we go. And this is the pencil tool. I'm actually gonna erase this. I wanna keep the uh, layer underneath pretty transparent so we can drop color underneath when we need to. Let's see. Let's go back to pencil. I'm sure you could probably set some good keybinds for all these. Like I said, this is, maybe we'll look back at this, uh, this video in a year. That's my first time diving into it and like, wow, look how terrible I used to be in here. Maybe we look in a year and realize I'm still terrible in it. So I think I'm gonna do, actually we'll spend a little bit more time on these wings before we dive into some type of line drawing here. Like I said, I'm not totally sold on some of the pose, but I think it works for what we're, what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, maybe this, we'll extend the canvas out too. I really don't want a um, large section of it coming off. I 
really trying to get a lot of these these curve shapes in. And I usually have my hand on the bracket keys. You probably see in this bottom left that the brush shape changes like crazy. That is kind of a habit I have from years and years of painting as I'm constantly changing it with my two fingers on the bracket keys. That's something that's always pretty constant. Maybe we'll have this other wing kind of right here. I feel like maybe this doesn't go back so much. Like I said before, I wasn't even sure if I was even going to give his fellow legs, but he's got them now. Okay. So, I usually, this is kind of like my messy first preliminary sketch. I think if we're going to do some type of larger... Um, concept we do like a whole bunch of variations with different silhouettes uh, so super important but I'm totally fine with you know this is just a have fun we're hanging out sketch that'd be pretty good all right so opacity I'm gonna drop this down and let's see what we can do with uh, some line work on top and let's see how clean we can get it I don't know why it takes me so long to just find a new layer. Like I said, there's probably a good keybind for it, and I haven't really explored into it too much. All right, he looks like a like a friendly little dragon demon, which I do like. I right, was trying the uh, let's try some of these pe uh, pens out that you get. A turn up pen. I'd be interested to see. Oh, that's that is nice. You know, you always want a brush that you feel like is, isn't fighting you. Tapered pen. I'm probably gonna swap between a bunch of these as we go because I'm really just exploring how it all works. And like I said, I'm not, I want to kind of get away with some other workflow. Like I'm not just using the same two brushes or anything like that. You know, maybe you just randomly find something that just kind of hits on something for you. This one's cool. And maybe we'll have to do like a couple kind of line drawings here just to see where this stuff goes. Like I said, this this one might, might not even work out at all, this, this pen, but it's worth a shot. That's almost like the best thing about using any new piece, any new program or new brush, even like when you're doing traditional work. Finding a new pen or new brush and just doing a sketch with a new one can feel like such a nice change. Yeah, you can get some really good line quality with this one. This is just the G pen. Oh, like look at that, that's kind of cool. And I feel like this is always kind of something that was missing from Photoshop most of the time was this kind of nice sketchiness that I would always try to get. And I really feel like I had spent years trying to find nice custom brushes to make things feel like ink or anything. And now I'm pretty much finding it right away. Very cool. A little bit like line weight to the top here. You know, I always gotta have my characters looking in that direction. Like I said, but maybe we'll start to change stuff up this year and see what we can uh, produce instead. That's a little bit different. Because maybe this face at all doesn't really match the character, but who knows.
Maybe this is more the center line here. Give it the old flip. We got these longer horns at the top here. Like I said, I'm trying to keep my hand off and doing these like nice long curves. Feels pretty good. And then we can kind of keep playing with that. Oh yeah, so I think I was starting to say earlier too, I would love for us to kind of continue this. So if I'm thinking of ideas for the next drawing with Dave, that I can kind of just look back to a previous the, the previous episode that we have here. So if you guys have like concept ideas, I think concepts are probably gonna be easier for us to do, kind of these quicker one-off character ideas and stuff like that that we can kind of tackle and this, uh, this time frame will be pretty good. This guy has a lot of stuff jamming out of his head. But that's okay. And I think it's even fine at this stage to, you know, not like looking at any reference or any kind of individual inspiration. I'm just kind of just winging it, just seeing what kind of interesting things could be made. Could be nothing. Does he still need eyebrows? Maybe. Probably. You know, eyebrows are always kind of the best way that you're going to show some type of emotion here. It's almost like a, like a demon like them for something I don't even know okay I keep looking for the magnifying glass at the bottom I want to come back and kind of see did I oh we're back I think I clicked back in the pencil by accident yeah I did pen I'm sticking with the pen for now I really like this one Maybe we'll just stick with this brush for the time being. Trying some different little curves out. I'm trying to semi stay focused on the larger broad shapes instead of diving into little details right now. Let's try to figure out where his biceps actually were. Maybe we'll see some of the vein. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. And then the forearm here. Now, if I can be too crazy about some of these lines overlapping. You know, we can always keep cleaning a piece as we go. Maybe we can actually get some really thick black areas to kind of show these undersides. Oh, I thought I saw some shape underneath. I might have done something cool, but... That's going to add anything that we're really looking for. You know, we would normally have to kind of bring the shape around so it actually fits like it fits and curves around, like, you know, this whole deal up here. And like I said, I'm not too creative to focus on it right now.
There's different things that's all connecting this together. Then this little little piece down here. And more of these curves. There we go. This guy is most certainly going to have some type of back issues with this posture. I'm trying to grab some kind of thicker line weight to these little areas here. Give it a little something. It'd be cool if you had some kind of thick metal collar that's kind of hanging out underneath. Not sure all the details of it, but we can just average a sketch and we just make it out. Like I said, sometimes it's nice this isn't going over to any modeler or anything, so sometimes it doesn't really matter. And then I think we had these curves. We kind of have this curve shape happening a lot on this piece, but that's okay. I think we're gonna actually go, pr I think, pretty thick with our line weight at one point around this thing. Just so we can get some parts to actually really stand out. Yeah, so you know, doing stuff like this, I always wish I was able to dedicate more time into getting back into inking and comic book work. Uh, it's always something I hope I have the time and able to get back to uh, someday. It's definitely a major, major goal of mine is to, uh, you know, be part of some type of comic someday. I think I just have to refocus a lot of my time and resources to, to make something like that happen. Okay, let's see here. These are just demon armor shapes on them. Okay, and we'll just put some interesting curvature on a lot of these pieces. See what we can do with that. Some uh, kind of raised parts on the back side, give a little more interest. And I think we're gonna have this be part of his back wing. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. And this was something else back here. All right, I think he's. Slowly, <laughs> something's starting to happen. Very cool pen, though. Really, really cool pen. I'm sticking with it. I'm not moving off it yet. We're sticking with. And we'll just give some type of demon hands here. And curve them in. These are kind of my placeholder hands. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll hold the place okay, and then you know, other times I'll I'll shoot some reference for them. It's always fine to shoot reference when you need. Reference is a good thing. I, th I think every level of professional, for the most part, still utilize reference. 
you know, I still talk to a lot of artists that you know that well, you still know a part isn't accurate or the anatomy is not right. And then I ask them, I was like, well, did you shoot some reference to fix it? And they're like, no, I didn't. I just left it. And so it's really just taking that extra step and getting in there and putting in that time for that type of reference. It's actually, it is very important. Let's zoom back in a spell here. Or out. Pen. You know, on a sketch and stuff, it's really not super important. But nothing will kind of torpedo your portfolio faster than uh, anatomy that stands out that isn't uh, looking the way it should. It's such like a standout for any type of recruiter or anyone looking to review your portfolio. As good as a piece might be rendered if there's some like glaring anatomy issues, it's, uh, it's very hard to get by. Like even these feet, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time figuring out these kind of like little claw feet and he's got like a little bump in the back maybe. Oh, I spread back there maybe. I think he's got really small feet, that's okay. That's why he hovers right above the ground because he doesn't use his legs very much. We'll go with that. That's our art story and uh, we're gonna stick with it. You know, I like to say, you know, decently zoom down if I can, then I can kind of bounce around and mess with these little shapes. So when I'm kind of thicking up these parts up here, I want to feel like it's standing out a little bit more from his body. You know, we don't have to, I don't want to like just straight outline it with the same thickness all around, but I think like a little bit could be kind of cool just to give it that little something, you know, a little more character to it. And maybe this huge piece that's sitting up here is really going to have quite a bit. And these kind of high impact folded areas. And sometimes you can just put like a little kind of line noise in areas. It kind of hints that it is something else, but you don't really have to dive into a lot of the details of it. There's just more horns and kind of craziness back there, which might be kind of neat. It's gonna have some like demon gems in there. All right. And let's see if we can figure out something over here. Real quick, keeping it, you know, super loose. I don't think we actually need to get super tight with this one. I think this stuff works okay. Just jam some fingers here. And we'll have the same little gem areas. And seeing them we'll put his little his little drop shadow right here. So we know where he's he's floating above the ground. There you go. Okay, do we want to do this tail? I think we'll throw it in. Don't need to dive into like a lot of kind of like scaly bits and or anything, but we'll get at least some shapes here of its flow. And maybe we'll, we'll mess with the wing, wing back there so it doesn't kind of slam right into it. 
Yeah, maybe this doesn't even need wings. Maybe he can just be a floating guy. That's possible. I think we did that maybe. We kind of fix some of these shapes out. And we just kind of do this. We don't need the wings maybe. I've kind of been playing so much with these floating shapes and I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't always make sense, but I like how it looks. And sometimes that's enough. What are we looking at without this background? Oh, okay. So we've got this kind of little, little ink sketch going. I think that is kind of neat. And I already kind of like the results. I think his leg kind of folded all the way up is a little awkward, but maybe that's something we can change later. How about we actually go in, mess with some of the paint. Let's do a, uh, a grayscale on this possibly. Let's see how, uh, how far we can go. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Roster. I'm sure there's other cool layers, but I don't know how to use any of them right now. Hmm. I wouldn't mind going with some solid colors to start. So I don't know if I kind of want any kind of fancy brushes or anything. Yeah, maybe even just the mechanical pencil will work. There might be a, a better way, and guys, you can let me know down below as far as trying to add color or value certain areas, you know, kind of either with masking or lassoing certain areas. What I want to do, I was going to just kind of go in and Paint this, and this actually has a cool look. This the feel of this reminds me of kind of old Prisma colors. You can see that slight like transparency and it going on top of it, which is kind of cool. Because then I think we can actually mess with our other values right on top of it, and that might give us some pretty neat results. So let's spend a few minutes and jam some some of this on here. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have it doesn't have to be crazy neat. So not too bad. We spent about thirty five minutes on this piece so far. It's pretty good for kind of getting a quick carrier uh, character sketch down. Like I said, I don't mind kind of breaking out that. Uh, and the lines in the back. Maybe the looseness of us kind of blocking this out will kind of add to the uh, the character of it. It feels kind of more like a tangible sketch of me going out old school Prisma markers on it, which is definitely something we used to do a lot back in art school, especially when we had to get kind of our grayscales uh, approved. I know for illustration class, we used to have to do a, uh, a ton of grayscales to get approved by the teacher before we would move into color. Which was a, you know, a good way for us to focus on values early on. You know, there's something about it not being ultra clean that kind of gives it that traditional feel to it. Sometimes when something gets so clean that's done digital, I feel like it can get too sterile. Where it loses that little bit of life and personality. You know, you see that, I think, when you see like a, an amazing sketch done in pencil in someone's sketchbook. And it just has that that life about it. That energy of imperfection. And something that we can kind of keep with everything. All right, we save that out. I'm going to make a new layer though because it's in my blood and that is what we're going to do. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm so used to grab my colors down there, so I apologize. 
I wonder if we can grab a whole area. Okay, we do have it selected. And let me see if we have pencil. Ooh, pastels. Let's just try one of these just because I haven't tried most of this stuff. So I want to see what kind of effect. That's cool. We can get a little bit of texture in there. I don't think we need it on this one. So let's try some other stuff. What about, what about crayon? That's pretty neat. I kind of like that. That's cool. And I think getting some nice gradients into your work at the beginning is very, very cool. And I would have never thought to use a crayon brush to just to give it a little bit of a little bit of something here. I want to keep trying some other ones though. Okay, this was yeah, pencil, pen, and we had brush. Let's try some uh, watercolor, smooth watercolor. Okay, I see. That's pretty cool. This is basically practice brushes with Dave Bauer now. And I have been linked. Uh, some other artists have sent me some awesome links to custom brushes to bring into Clip Studio. I do plan on exploring and using those. But for the first video in and us checking it all out, I really wanted to go with kind of the bare bones package because I think you can still get some very, very cool stuff just with what you start with. Like this feels great to me already. Like surprisingly great. Like sponsorship or not, you guys might have a convert on your hands. I think if I got used to the workflow, I don't know, there's something that's really cool happening. It actually reminds me of way back, I used to almost exclusively use Painter way back in school. I loved that kind of tactile feel to it. And then I think I just at one point, I kind of just swapped off it. I'm not sure why, and I never really went back. There's some really cool blending stuff. We can do. Let's see here. What if we get some of this underneath here? I'm kind of getting in the in the zone on this thing. Let me try some different brushes. Like I said, if a brush ever kind of starts fighting you in an area, it's always worth uh, swapping off and and trying something else. So like right there, you know, that brush wasn't really giving me the look I was looking for. Uh, let me go back to some of these pencils I thought were kind of neat. Even like the standard lighter pencil could do like, it kind of reminds me of kind of a regular kind of old airbrush. You get kind of some soft edges. Yeah, it's funny. I've had a lot of people on my Discord and on the Twitch stream that have constantly been wanting well, to spend more time in here just because, you know, so many of them spend all their time in here. I do believe, and I'll have to look it up for everybody, that someone has converted my brush pack to be usable in CSP. Um, I will find that out, actually. Kind of like these thicker ones like this. That's cool. Let's grab this. And darken out these little under areas. And maybe if we darken out this area behind, um, we'll bring in, hit the head forward a bit. I think we only want these shapes right here though. Awesome, awesome. We have something kind of loose still happening with some of these, which is kind of nice. A 
we'll do the same thing here, just kind of this kind of like metal shine. You know, we're just doing some of the darker values now. We haven't even started to hit up anything close to what might be like highlights that will be pretty nice and interesting. And we'll go totally dark on, on these, these parts right here. Maybe I want to do something, find something maybe with like a more of a hard edge. I think maybe we'll go back to some of these. Do I actually try pastel? Get a little more texture and stuff. Kind of nice though. There we go. Yeah, it's very cool. You've seen how that kind of all brushes on some little slight gradients. You know, we really haven't focused too much on like, oh, what's the what's the light source on this, and you know, all those specifics you usually bring up of things to figure out in a piece. But that's okay. I don't think when you're just sketching and having fun, I think sometimes you can just. Just relax for a little bit on some of that stuff. It can really just <laughs> stress you out. You get overly focused on it and, you know, it's something you need to pop in the piece later and really see if it's what's gonna work on it. Okay, let's try, I keep experimenting here. Maybe even with this dark pencil, which I remember it being a little bit harder, we might be able to get some. It's interesting on top. Kind of some more direct, harder edge shadows. I feel like I'm starting to kind of slow up. I want to uh, still keep it loose. Then all these uh, shapes over here, we can maybe figure out some some neater, neater, more interesting shadow shapes. Yeah, there we go. I think it's a good idea. Kind of stay as loose as you can for as long as you can. You know, the more you slow down, the more the piece is gonna feel like it comes to a kind of a halt. There you go, it just adds more gradients there. And same with all this, we can knock back, back this little shape. Yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying the little bit longer format. I'm pretty sure the older episodes were a bit shorter, but I think they felt rushed. And these are pretty unscripted. I just kind of sit here. I usually have most of the time no idea what I'm gonna paint and then just hang out and talk. So sometimes I, I may be a little too quiet, but I'll try to keep it entertaining for you guys. Well, like I said, you can always just even, you can mute me entirely if you want to put on music and hang out while we, while we sketch. Very right, cool. Let's actually bring some of these gradients from the top here. We'll use this colored pencil again, actually. Gave us some cool stuff. You can get a lot of just interesting value into your piece just by some simple gradients. You know, I like to go from dark to light to some more interesting parts of the piece. You know, I think the shoulder piece, we could spend time to actually make it like a lot more interesting, but it should be fine for this one. Oh, 
Okay, uh, bu -bu -bum. new layer. We'll, we'll make a new layer just to do some kind of more highlights. Let me deselect this so I don't have to look at the marching ants anymore. Pencil. I'll try a lighter pencil. And I'm not just going to kind of brush over the whole area. I'm just kind of figure out some kind of more interesting kind of like highlight areas and it might be enough for for a sketch, you know. Just to give it a little little life here. Figuring out what these little shapes and everything are for the metal and who knows. You know, I don't want to go over an entire piece like that. You can definitely overdo highlights. It's something that happens a lot. I can be very guilty of it as well. But for this, could be kind of nice to get something. I feel like this is a, a friendly demon, for sure. He's here to help. Yeah, we can really spend the time and really mold out all these shapes. I don't know. This has been uh, this has been a really fun sketch. I'd love to take this thing to color. But what do you guys think about taking this to color next? I'm really spending an hour or two and seeing how we go about it. I'm I'm really not sure of kind of my own process of how we do it. Uh, because I, I do want to change it up a bit. Maybe I, I tackle it differently than I used to, not just putting like a light layer down and using overlay and multiply layers. Let's figure out a new way to apply color and figure out this character. Um, but yeah, I think that might do it for today. I mean, this was kind of pretty much my full introduction into using Clip Studio. Like I said, I spent like a little bit of time uh, initially checking it out, but this is probably the, the most time I, I've spent here. and. Uh, I gotta say, I think we're gonna be doing a lot more work in the program going forward. Uh, super easy to use. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. And I can't wait to actually dive into some more uh, custom brushes that a lot of different artists have sent me over uh, once they heard I was actually gonna be using Clip Studio. So guys, yeah, thank you so much. And definitely put some comments down below. Do you wanna see this color? Or some other cool characters you might wanna see? Uh, this is actually a ton of fun. And we can do some silly stuff too. You know, let's do some mashups of uh, different type of characters and you know, let's just have it be a little bit more back and forth and interactive and any questions that you guys might have. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode of Drawing with Dave.